Hello everyone and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass where we talk about all the medications that work on the central nervous system. And here we will talk about the chloropromazine. Chloropromazine is an antipsychotic medication that is used in treatment of schizophrenia. And here we will explain the pharmacology of this medication. So there is another video in the same playlist that explains the pharmacology of the antipsychotics. In that video, I explain the mechanism of action, the therapeutic uses, and adverse effects of antipsychotics in details. If you want to watch it, it is linked in the description of this video. But in this video, we will explain the unique and different aspects of chloropromazine. You can always skip to other parts of this video using the video chapters available in the video description. And regarding the pictures, the picture on the left is for the chemical structure of the chloropromazine. The black spheres are for the carbon atoms. The white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms. The blue spheres are for the nitrogen atoms. The yellow sphere is for the sulfur atom and the green sphere is for the chloride atom and the right picture is for the oral formula of this medication so let's start with an overview so chloropromazine is the scientific name of the medication and the famous trade names are the thorazine and the large actil and it is classified as low potency antipsychotic so low potency means that it is less effective compared with the high potency antipsychotics like the haloperidol for example and it's a typical antipsychotic so antipsychotics are classified into two major groups the typicals and the atypicals the typicals are the old ones they are developed in the 1950s and this medication is from the phenothiazines family and it is used in treatment of schizophrenia and some other mental disorders and chloropromazine was developed in the 1950 and it was the first antipsychotic to be developed regarding the pharmacokinetics of this medication so chloropromazine is available as oral, intramuscular, and intravenous formulas, the oral absorption is variable with bioavailability of 10 to 90 percent. And then it is widely distributed through the body. It has high lipid solubility, so it easily cross the blood brain barrier to distribute to the CNS where it has its action. It is extensively metabolized in the liver by the cytochrome B450 enzymes, especially the CYBA12 and the CYB2D6. It is also metabolized by the kidney and the gastrointestinal tract, and it is excreted mainly in urine. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the chloropromazine. So it works by antagonizing the dopamine D2 receptors in the brain and it block the dopamine in the mesolimbic and the mesocortical pathways which lead to the relieving of the psychotic symptoms. So the symptoms of the schizophrenia and psychosis are caused by increase in the dopamine in the mesolimbic and the mesocortical pathways and this medication block the dopamine in these pathways leading to relieving the symptoms of the psychosis and schizophrenia. So the mesolimbic pathway connects the ventral tegmental area in the brain to the nucleus accumbens and the, this is here the mesolimbic pathway and the mesocortical connects the ventral tegmental area with the frontal cortex. So this is here the mesocortical pathway. And the chloropromazine also blocks the dopamine in the nigrostriatal pathway, which lead 
to the extrapyramidal symptoms as adverse effects. So this is here the nigro striatal pathway it connects the substantia nigra with the striatum and putamen. And when it is blocked by the chlorpromazine, this would lead to side effects as extrapyramidal symptoms. Examples for the extrapyramidal symptoms are tremor, dyskinesia, akathasia, and dystonia. And the chlorpromazine also blocks the dopamine in the tuberoinfundibular pathway, which lead to hyperprolactinemia as an adverse effect also. So the tuberoinfundibular pathway connects the hypothalamus with the pituitary. And this pathway controls the prolactin, and when the dopamine is blocked in this pathway, the prolactin would increase, leading to hyperprolactinemia as an adverse effect to the use of the chloropromazine. Chloropromazine also has anti-serotonin, anti-muscarinic, and antihistamine activity, and it also blocks the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree too. And these actions lead to side effects that we will talk about in the adverse effect part of this video. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the chloropromazine. So it is used in treatment of psychotic disorders, including schizophrenia, and it is used in treatment of the manic phase of the bipolar disorder, and it is used in treatment of chronic hiccups, and it is also used in treatment of nausea and vomiting, not responding to the first line medications because it has anti-emetic effects, and they stems from it is ability to block the dopamine, the histamine, and muscarinic receptors in the vomiting center. So it also blocks the vomiting center leading to anti-emetic effect and that is what make it useful in treatment of nausea and vomiting. And it is used in treatment of agitation and severe anxiety because it leads to calming effect on the patient and it is used off-label in treatment of migraine and serotonin syndrome. Now let's talk about the dosing for schizophrenia and for nausea and vomiting for this medication. So for schizophrenia, the oral dose is that the patient initially start on 25 to 75 milligrams orally twice per day and it is maintained at 200 milligrams per day and maximum dose is 800 milligrams per day. And the intramuscular or intravenous dose is 25 milligrams, then 15 milligrams after one to four hours of the first dose. And then the dose is repeated and it can be from 300 to 800 milligrams per day. For nausea and vomiting, the oral dose is 10 to 25 milligrams orally every four to six hours and repeated as needed. And the intramuscular or intravenous dose for nausea and vomiting is 25 to 50 milligrams every four to six hours and repeated as needed. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the chloropromazine. So it leads to extrapyramidal symptoms, which are movement disorders because it inhibits the nigrostriatal pathway, as we mentioned. Those include tremor, dyskinesia, and akathasia are seen by to lesser degree than other typical antipsychotics. And the other adverse effect is the neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a triad of hyperthermia, muscle rigidity, and autonomic disturbance. And because the chlorobromazine is a low potency antipsychotic, then it is associated with more anticholinergic side effects due to the blocking of the muscarinic receptors done by this drug and those effects include blurred vision, dry mouth, sedation and constipation. It also blocks the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree 
leading to postural hypotension and lightheadedness and it also lead to mild bone marrow suppression and it lead to increase in the prolactin level because it inhibits the tuberoinfundibular pathway as we mentioned and this lead to decreased libido in both genders and gynecomastia in males, galactoria in females and erectile dysfunction in males. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications of this medication. So previous hypersensitivity reaction to the drug make it contraindicated and central nervous system depression or coma also make this drug contraindicated and it is also contraindicated in bone marrow suppression and in hepatic failure and acute liver disease and in pheochromocytoma. And regarding the cautions in using this medication, there is a high risk of closed angular glaucoma in elderly patients taking this medication. So with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.